Yo, you can hear me all good? Cool. All the music and the audio is all, all good. Cool. Awesome. All right. Give me two seconds. Yo, how's it going? <laughs> False tape. <laughs> what are we making tonight? Um, I was thinking of doing something different actually. Like, instead of doing like actual production stuff, I was thinking of doing some more basic concept stuff. Kind of something different from work for once. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I didn't even notice the 69 part. But yeah, I was thinking of doing more concept stuff instead of like production stuff. So a lot of like kit bashing and stuff like that. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, have you guys seen um, Weave Silk? Or Silk Weave, I think it's called. Yo, how's it going? Thanks, man. Yo, thanks. Appreciate it. Usually I stream like production stuff, but I kind of want to do something a bit more creative today. This is a, uh, this is a program I use for finding like really random cool silhouettes. It's called Weave Silk. You can just Google it and you'll find it. It's like a web browser thing. It's pretty cool. 
Yo, how's it going? It's really cool for doing like really random obscure shapes. Especially because you got symmetry, because you can just go to like. You can imagine this as like a top view of like a spaceship or something. And you can really just like flick your wrist and it will send the lines across, so you get lots of really cool like organic shapes. A lot of my spaceship designs actually come from this method, to be honest. Ah, oh, too much. Like, yeah, I can show you my art station. I uh, I use this quite a lot. Like this, this spaceship design here is actually from this method. I don't know if I've shown people this before, but uh, yeah, there it is. So I just did like random side views and then drew on top of it and then just developed it over time and then we end up with this. But yeah, Weave still looks pretty cool. <laughs> the nuke script. Um, I had a friend teaching me nuke at the time. It was it was a lot more work than I thought it would be, to be honest. And I probably won't really use nuke again. Where is it? Yeah, this is the only time I use nuke. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do this again. I mean the cool thing about this was I could just constantly update my renders and it would just update my scene but like even just like adding random lights in this is the light and then here's all the position well I think these are the nodes yeah whatever I'm not doing that again oh you had ads okay fair enough <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna do that again oh do we lose wave silk where's it going uh, no, I guess we lost it. Whoops. Weave silk. No, that's kind of weird. Let's do side view now. Yo, how's it going? Actually, now screw it. Let's. We're playing around too much. Let's uh let's see some things. Mm. Oops, it's over here. Wait, what? So give me a sec. Oh, okay. That's weird.
Any tips for modeling a car? Um, get very, very, very good reference. Like what, what car specifically you're talking about? Mercedes E Class. 151st? Alright, I don't think you need anywhere near that. But, um, yeah, good reference is always very handy. Fuck it. Hmm. Which one should we try? That's kind of cool. Not this me. <laughs> this reminds me of the Milano a bit. Model myself? Nah, I can't. I can't do characters to save my life. Nah, I'm not really feeling any of these to be honest. Let's do them some more. How do you get it to clean? Uh you you remodel it. <laughs> Yeah, whatever, this will do. How, um, when you say you fucked up this apology, like, what exactly do you mean? That, that could mean anything. <laughs> uh, what I'm doing right now is I've just instanced, like, a group to the other side and I'm just you know moving the points around now to try and find like a cool shape so it's kind of like looking with clouds sort of thing Oops. like I'm not like with this sort of stuff like I'm not gonna care about topology at all like this thing's gonna be super bad as far as topology goes But yeah, the idea is just making cool shapes at this point.
can you send me like a uh, a picture or something like a uh, what part are you struggling with specifically? Wait, is that the front? Oh, that's the front. Yeah, to be honest, cars, cars are really hard. Like, cars are really good to practice hard surface, like, topology with. Because the problem with cars is, especially, like, the shaders are so clean. Like, any, any bad topology is picked up really easily, especially with, like, pinching and stuff like that. That's why, like, making a car is a really good challenge. But it's also hard. But, you know, that's always a good thing. Oh, I did it over the top of that. Okay. Oops. Oh yeah, so I can't go to vert mode because I've got the con like the concept below it. So you can just grab the concept and put it on a different layer. Well, put it on a layer, I mean. And then just go to reference. So now I can select the topology really easily. Uh, I see, okay. Do you mind if I put this on the screen? That's the other way. Yeah, I, I would start at a lot lower poly. Hmm. Like I'd only have half the span so far, and then I'd kind of subdivide it afterwards. If that makes sense. So like your tire itself. Oops, let's see. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I think like the problem with like things like this is you don't want to go into doing all this crazy topology here while right next to it is still really basic. You kinda wanna do it all at once. What's the car look like? What's it called? I should just do this. Oops, that's the Oh, nope. don't make this too big.
Yeah, I... Where's my layers gone? Come on. Why is the curse not making it? Oh, that's really weird. You can't go down, you have to grab up. Oh, okay. That's dumb. Alright. Oh, uh, this looks pretty hard to model, actually. <laughs> Wait, this is the same car? Are you sure? Oh, it is. Wait, is it? <laughs> Photoshop it. Um, yeah, like, I would only have like half of these edge loops. Actually, no, you need those. Oh shit, let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you kind of don't want everything to be crazy complex like this, while right next to it, it's like this. You want everything to be pretty even, kind of like this topology here is good. So you've got enough here. Like, that's the thing, you've, already, you've got the base there, but it's just you want everything spread out evenly like this first, before you start going pretty crazy. So you could probably... Mm. I know when I usually build things, I usually put like the main points I need. Like you definitely need like that line, for example. You need this bit. Oh god, I can't draw for shit. That bit. Yeah, this is much harder to explain than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, fuck. Yeah, it's a lot easier when you're actually modeling the car yourself. But yeah, firstly, like, I wouldn't have, like, crazy topology like this while right next to it is completely bare. Keep everything really basic first. Like, don't... I wouldn't do any of this triple edging or anything like this before the entire car looks like this. You want everything to be pretty... pretty uniform before you start going crazy. Oh, we already got green. So you want... Yeah, that... Like yeah, you've got the most, you've got the general shapes, but yeah, just don't worry about like triple edging before you go. Hmm. Like, are you trying to resolve this topology or are you just kind of leaving it how it is? <laughs> Red spaghetti. Yeah, you you want the basic shapes first. You you don't want to go too crazy with the topology because if you now want to model, like if you now want to move this section, you you're dealing with a lot of topology at once. Okay, but like this is like too basic. This bit here, you you definitely need more spans along here. God, all right. Like even with even with this thing I'm making, see how it's really really basic, but I still have even spans among it, or along it. You want your car to be like this. At the moment, your car has like heaps of topology here, but then this area has like nothing in it. So I definitely make sure you do all that first before adding topology. 
But you've got the base, I think you just need to remove all your extra topology you don't really need at the moment. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't really explain that too, too well to be honest. Yeah, enough of that. I mean, yeah, cars are hard though. Like, it's definitely one of the more, co more complex things. It's just because there's so many very subtle edges. Well, yeah. Um, you can, like, what I would do is I would do something kind of like what I'm doing here. I would, like, put in the points that I need, but you don't have to connect everything yet, if that makes sense. Like, especially when you're blocking out the main forms, you can put kind of like reminders of where things are. So I do that quite a lot, to be honest. And then like, yeah, so if you had your basic car like this, you could either smooth it. Or I actually wouldn't smooth it, actually. it's If you do smooth it, a lot of your single points will, you know you get this sort of thing. It'll break like that. You could either just smooth it once you have a basic shape, or what I usually do is, I usually just do this, like I'll put, I'll go to uh, edge loop mode, and I'll put like two edges right in the middle, and then I'll just move those up, oh, without breaking it too much. So I, I personally actually do move a lot of edge loops around manually, like this. But I mean, you need to have the eye to really know if, like, see, it's really broken here. Oops. Yeah, like, you kind of want to want to do what I'm doing right now, which is keeping really basic just to get the main shapes first. And then when you've knocked everything out pretty basic, then you add like another layer of detail. Like I wouldn't suddenly just go in and make this piece really nice while this is really bare. You would kind of do it at the same time. You, you want to build things up in layers. To be honest, this is actually why I really like, for example, cars, because you have all these really cool sweeping shapes. That's why a lot of my spaceship designs usually do end up kind of like that. But I usually focus on making like more panels with uh, lots of exposed mechanical gap. But I'm also trying to do is avoid like straight lines, so everything is curving, bent. Oh, too much. Which might look cool like this.
<laughs> yeah. Who's the guy? Is it Reese Halcom? Salcom? Wait, are you sure this is from the film? Oh, is this the personal one? Uh, to be honest, I'm I'm a bit not sure about this sort of stuff. Like it's it's very cool, but um, we're not really allowed to do that. Oh no, it's, he, it says he did work on the spinner, didn't he? Oh, where's it gone? Now let's see. Oh, okay, that's... You're technically not really like I I would never want to do it either because it's kind of really suspect if if I built a spaceship at work and then I suddenly rebuilt it at home you know people might think where did you get that design from and uh, it might look like you took the model I'm not saying he did but um, it's it's not safe to do that I mean, you've already built it once anyway, why would you want to build it again? <laughs> but yeah, I, I will never remake something I've made out of, on a film. It's just a bit risky. I mean, like, technically you can, but contractually, probably not. <laughs> it's It's a very grey area. Like there's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I, I don't think I'd want to remake something at home. Like, I don't know. Like if I, say for example I went home and I built a transformer, that might not be that bad. But if I went home and I built Hot Rod, then it might be a bit suspect. So if he didn't build the spinner, it's not too bad. Yeah, that's just my opinion on that sort of stuff. Like, what you are and aren't allowed to talk about is an extremely grey area. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I'm not going to mention anyone's name or go into any stories like that though. But it does happen. Like N NDAs are no joke. I mean these are these are multi-million dollar movies we're working on. So uh, yeah. Yeah so when you work at a studio you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Which means Anything you do at work, you won't tell anyone else about. Especially if the film is not out yet, that's a big no. Yeah, I'll be back in two seconds.
Oh yeah, thanks for the sub as well. The anti stun, appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's not common. It does happen though. Oh, what are we listening to this for? Yeah, it's NDAs are very important. Like a really big one is you can't really like tell people what film you're working on until it's on the company website. Which is why like I won't tell anyone what I'm working on at the moment. Because it's not on the company website at the moment. And then even then you're only allowed to sh talk about what is released to the public. And then even then it's not, sh you can't tell anything about it. You can't be like, oh, like say for example when they showed shots of Corellia from Solo and the, s the Solo trailer came out. I could say I'm working on this environment, but I couldn't say I'm working on Corellia because no one knows it's Corellia. Definitely not on the stream because this is recorded for the world to see. Oh, how did that happen? Damn, 5 a.m. Damn, you shouldn't you shouldn't stay up for me, man. Thanks thanks for tuning in. Damn, 5 a.m. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to get back into streaming again. Back on the weekend as well, so you don't have to wait up at like 5 a.m. Yeah, since I went to Denmark, it kind of uh kind of knocked my schedule off a bit. That's kind of weird. Talk about Denmark? Yeah, Denmark was really cool. Um... I was just there for two weeks. I taught at the animation workshop and taught the modeling. But um, yeah, it was kind of funny because like <laughs> I had <laughs> I had um, I had all these plans of what to teach people. But when I got there, everyone had already read my blogs. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I was like, "Fuck! What do I teach you guys?" I kind of shot myself in the foot by giving everyone all this free information. Oh. But it's cool. I mean, originally I did those blogs kind of as like a brain dump. I mean, aside from people seem to like them. I originally did it kind of as like a brain dump of uh, everything I know. So when I did go teach, I would kind of have things to talk about. This shape is really weird. Let's get rid of that. Yo, how's it going? Hmm. This does have potential, but now this is getting a problem. Get rid of that. Grab this. Move this stuff in a bit.
What I'm trying to do is just try and see if I can reuse any of my existing shapes to kind of like... Yeah, fill in more of the design. God, this thing is weird. But weird is cool. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, when I went to Denmark, it, uh, it kind of threw everything off. And uh, I've been a bit busy since I got back. Oh, shit. I should probably save this, shouldn't I? Oh, I've already got that. Yeah, Jay McCart is really good. <laughs> nah. I um I train on Wednesdays now. So uh Wednesday gets a bit busy. Mm. That's kinda cool actually. I've got no idea what this thing is, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> How does that impact your work schedule? How does what impact my work schedule? Like breaking? kind of breaks the design of it. Whatever. It'll do for now. Oh, you're talking about you talking about the uh, teaching. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about training for a sec. I was like, why has my breaking got anything to do with ILM? Um, yeah, so I had originally said I was going to do it before I was at ILM. So it was kind of something I couldn't really get out of. Not that I'd want to anyway. It was really fun. kind of dumb actually. Any tips for lighting a camera up? Um, watch my first stream and you'll see. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Like, perspective concept art, like in general, you'll never ever be able to line up perfectly because 
they, uh, I mean, obviously they paint in 2D, so it's never going to line up perfectly. I pick. What? Yeah, if you see my first stream, you'll see me lining up a uh, like a, a concept. I start with the super simple blocking, like as you can, like kind of like what I'm doing here, like really, really basic blocking. And I also work. Um, just imagine this is a concept for some reason. I always work with like instances, like so the right side is instance of the left. So I can like say, imagine there's a concept behind this. I can move pieces to kind of put where the la main landmarks are, if that makes sense. <laughs> nah, it's... It's just something that takes practice, and even then, it's a pretty it's a pretty fast, well, pretty shoddy job. It's something, yeah, it just takes time. But to be honest, like, it doesn't happen that often. Like, so much concept these days is 3D concept. So we'll usually get like a concept model. <laughs> this is really annoying me actually. Get rid of that. <laughs> nah, it's pretty hot. Concept models? Um, yeah, maybe. I did these, um... I did all of these, uh, what do they call them? I did like a spaceship a day sort of thing, so I'm sure I can probably give some of those out. leave that for now. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny, like I've, I've had friends in schools that message me saying, hey, my, uh, my lecturer knows who you are. I'm like, <laughs> alright, awesome. No, it's kind of funny. The idea of being known is a bit strange to me still. Like, it still kind of blows my mind that people turn up to watch me model. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Yeah, that's awesome to hear it actually helps. I mean, I just throw that stuff out there. I didn't... I didn't know how much people would actually like that sort of stuff. But yeah, no, no good topology today. I'm just dropping in pieces from my concept kit, by the way. Uh, 
that's kind of weird. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this topology is really bad. Like, Jesus, look at look at that. That's fucking fantastic. No, I never never follow this. Never follow this stuff for topology. This is purely concept stuff. To be honest, I kind of want to do more concept stuff now anyway. Like, I don't know. I just do so much topology at work. And we can totally still, like, I can still show you guys stuff if you want anything, like, specific. But I probably will start doing more, like, concept stuff on my stream. Oops. If people are interested in that sort of stuff. I don't know, do you guys usually come here specifically for like topology stuff or like just general spaceship stuff or like what what are people usually interested on the stream? Oh no, I'm just throwing I'm just throwing stuff together at the moment, just seeing what sticks. Like you guys saw at the start, I was literally just scribbling on I was just scribbling on weave silk and now we have this random shape which kind of is cool, it's got potential. <laughs> the main problem with the um, like I was noticing with the spaceship we're working on before is it's just it just takes a long time and I don't know if people get bored of that sort of thing like just looking at the same spaceship over and over looking at like just paneling if that makes sense because I'd already blocked out all the main stuff at that point it was simply just finishing it. Depends, like are people kind of interested in just watching me finish like an entire asset even if it takes like four months? Because the problem is since I'm only doing it like one day a week it's taking a while. <laughs> no, that's cool. We, I'm still using a multi-cut tool. I'm just not as zoomed in at the moment. I mean, we can mix it up. I don't know. Today I just kind of felt like not doing proper topology. Fuck, this thing is so weird. It's cool. I personally quite like all these, like, having open holes and, like, weird flowing angles. listen to. Oh, let's go at the start. I mean I'll definitely tailor the stream to like what people are interested in as well. Like there's no point me just sitting here if everyone's bored. <laughs> but if people find this sort of stuff cool then that's cool with me. I mean, I do kind of think about this stuff at work a little bit. Like, we do have to problem solve a decent amount as well. But it's rare. It's very rare we get like a free concept. I mean, actually, it's not rare. It's li almost impossible we have a free concept like this that we just do whatever we want. 
<laughs> yeah, you guys can entertain yourself. Honestly, this is why I really enjoy like kit bashing and stuff like that. You just you just throw stuff around and see what happens, and you sometimes end up with some cool random things you just never expected. And if it doesn't look cool, you just delete it, and you didn't really lose any time. No, that's not really working. No. Uh. Yo, morning. From Germany as well? Damn, it must be like 5 a.m. for you, right? Yo, thanks for tuning in at like 5am. Damn. Why, why are you up? I can't even wake up at like 8.30. That's cool. I mean, like, this isn't really how I work. This is kind of why I like doing this, to be honest, because this is not how I work. I mean, I don't know, I kind of might consider maybe one day going towards concept. I mean, just in general, like, having design skills in general are definitely a good thing. Like more and more work is in general is starting to be outsourced. So if you can tackle really complex assets in a creative way, it's definitely a massive plus. Spaghetti. I mean, not to, con not to concern you guys at all or anything like that, it's just something to be aware of. Like, 
like there's a lot of times we'll get like um, I mean like having just general design sense in general is really good because there's so many times we get like really vague concepts and we need to just make it work so knowing things about like you know angles matching each other like that definitely helps but this doesn't look good Do I have any interest in ILM San Fran? To be honest, I don't. Like I did originally always want to get to ILM San Francisco, but to be honest, like the reason I'm still in I'm still in Vancouver isn't necessarily ILM Vancouver. It's because I like living in Vancouver itself. That's the main reason why I want to stay in Vancouver. Like Vancouver is a really great city to live in. So I personally, I think about that sort of stuff now. Originally it was always entirely about the job, but now I'm kind of thinking about like, okay, there's there's more to life than just work. Like, where do, what do I want to do with my life sort of thing? I mean, yeah, San Fran was always the goal, but to be honest, I don't think about it anymore. Because I'm pretty happy being, well, living in Vancouver. I went to school for design. No. Oh, I, I studied graphic design, but that's nothing to do with this. I, I'm not... I wouldn't say I'm good at design or anything like that. I don't know. Some people seem to like my stuff. I, I personally don't really like my concept work at all. Which is why I do it, because I want to get better at it. I don't know, it's just kind of fun just like making different shapes and seeing what you can come up with. Oh shit. Like I had no plans when I came on the stream. I'm just throwing stuff around and to be honest this, this does have potential. But you know this will still probably look completely different than when I started it. Like at the moment, it feels very kitbashy because everything's kind of just thrown together. So that's when you spend the time to like make things kind of flow into each other properly. <laughs> yes, that's right. I've come to the conclusion that there's more to life than work. It took me five years, but here we are. Well, here I am working on my personal work at home, so. But yeah, the first five years of my career, it was entirely work-based, and now I've hit like the five year, well, five and a half year point. I'm trying to work a bit less now. It's it's important to have life balance. 
I'm, I'm starting to realize that now. I mean, it depends. If you're if you're at the start of the, your career, I think it's very important to hustle. You have to work really hard. You know, it's literally like one of the first things I told like the students is so like say for example, uh, this this is my favorite example that Feng Zhu came up with. So imagine you're at a school, right? It's a one-hour course. You do the bare minimum. You well, you don't do the bare minimum. You just do enough to pass. So you do like a forty-hour week, right? And then after a year, you've got one year experience. The guy next to you does goes home and does like another four hours, right? So they do 60 hour weeks instead of 40 hour weeks. At the end of the year, you may think you both have one year of experience, but in reality, that person has a year and a half while you've got one. And then the next year, you've got two and they've got three. And then who do you think is more likely to get a job? And then once you that person gets a job, you two are not even in the same race anymore. Yeah, Feng Zhu stuff is awesome. Yeah, Denmark was really cool, I really liked it. The people there were super friendly. Everything was pretty damn expensive though. <laughs> but uh... It's so good. I'd definitely go back there. I really liked it. How am I moving the objects with the stacked verts? What do you mean by that? Do you mean moving verts of multiple objects or... If a school wants to fly me out anytime soon, that's cool. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I never, I never really planned or thought of teaching. It just kind of happened. Faces that surround the object. The faces that are surround the object. <laughs> what, what faces are outside of the object? That's right. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll give you some time. Are you talk oh, are you talking about soft select like this? This is what you mean, right? Yeah, it's soft select. But um, the hotkey for soft select in general is B. Or you can just go here and add soft select. But yeah, soft select is really cool. Like, so at the moment, soft select is just selected for the object. But if you go here, and change this to global. Now you can like soft select, ugh. you can soft select like multiple objects at once. Like this gets really crazy. But I usually keep it on surface. Oh, not this? Alright. Oh, well soft select is cool anyway. Shout out if I do it again. Even though there's like a 7 second delay, but uh, that's cool. We'll figure it out one day. Yeah, soft select is cool. Um, oh, that's a bit weird.
Oh, how many in the class? Um, let's see. There was nine, but then some other people sat in the class to listen to me talk for some reason. <laughs> now that were cool. Oh, that's really strange. What the fuck? That's actually kind of uh, maybe not that cool actually. Maybe this way. Yeah, that'll do for now. Twenty fifty for free. What do you mean? Oh, you're talking about lattice. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, it's latticing. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So it's lattice. So what lattice is is um. How do I explain lattice? So if you go, oops, what am I doing? If you go to the form, you've got lattice. So if you click lattice, it creates this box. And then with this box, you can add the amount of divisions you want. Usually I just have like two for everything. And then what you can do now is you can move the vert around and it will deform the, de the geometry. Or you can have like multiple levels and then you can deform it this way and it's more control. Oh, there's not enough things in here. Oh, okay, it didn't work. Whatever. But yeah, Lattice is super cool. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, like, I use Latticing quite a lot for, um... Here's a good example. So, we got this pipe, right? And we want to have... Yeah, so we've got this pipe here. If you want to have this on an angle, the easiest way to do that is you just grab these verts, you lattice, but I've, I've got mine set to control L, so I just control L, grab these points, and then just move this like that. And then you get your nice, clean, straight line. But don't forget to delete your history, so that's how I get rid of it. So, the deformer will always stay there until you delete your history. Yo, how's it going? Yeah, I think it's called FFD in like Cinema 4D. God, this thing is so weird. It's cool. Yeah, as soon as I realize how powerful Lattice is, it just changes everything. Oops. Also, like, if you want to deform everything in general, you just Lattice it and then just start moving it like this. Like, see how much easier this is just moving the whole thing at once without having to worry about the verts. I mean, it does break stuff, but you get the point. Oh, Max as well? Alright, oh, cool. Yeah, this thing annoys me. Drawbacks to like, are you talking about drawbacks to latticing? Wait, what are you what are you guys are talking about? Yo, how's it going? Oh, nah. I mean, the only problem with like latticing is like if say for example we got these nice cylinders and then I lattice this and then do something like this, you've broken your cylinders are not cylinders anymore. Like that you can't do stuff like that. Like 
Ugh, look at that. Yeah, also, say for example, if... Let's get rid of the ladders for a sec. Alright, say we got this gone. So, at the moment, the transform is... Well, the locator is in the same... It follows this. So if you lattice this now, it'll follow it. But if you grab this and we freeze the transform, now it's not following it. Following it. So if I lattice now, it lattices the whole thing. And then this is really weird to work with. See, like it will start bending and doing weird shit. Like you have to be really careful when latticing, especially cylinders, because any cylinder won't be a cylinder anymore. But what you can do is, say for example you got this, if you press D, you can then alter the pivot, so we can make it match more, we can bend it this way, cool, and then you press D to stop editing, and then when you've done this, you can go modify, bake pivot, and then that now, if you lattice this, the lattice will follow it. It's still not perfect, but it's way better than before. But ladders can be really handy if you just need to bridge gaps between things. There. Yeah, like you, as soon as you move this, your cylinder is not a cylinder anymore. But like latticing is really cool if I want to alter all this, I can just grab this and pull this up. Go nuts with it. But also what you can do is you can grab just some verts and lattice those verts. So the that's why lattice is such a powerful tool. You can now start modifying just this section instead of the whole thing. And then even then what we can do is we can have like multiple things like this and then you can use soft selection on lattices. So now you can modify multiple points gently if that makes sense. It's very cool. So what do you place all? Do you, do you mean all this sort of stuff? Like, yeah, we're just doing concepting stuff. Everything, everything is placeholder and concept. I'm just throwing shapes around at the moment to see what's cool. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Whoa, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Everything just stopped working. Alright. Yeah, we've got some pretty cool shapes to work with now. Now I'm just playing with making everything a bit nicer and actually flow into each other now. I personally like leaving like large gaps. Maybe we can grab this.
No, screw that. Do you mean like this season or like ever? Oh wait, the season hasn't started yet, what am I talking about? Yeah, I've been to Whistler. I used to, uh... Damn, my first season here I went 15 times to Whistler in the one season. That was really cool. Like seriously, that's one of the coolest things, like... Living in Vancouver, like I can see mountains from my where I'm sitting right now pretty much. So if I want to go snowboard after work, you just rent a car and you just go up. You know, 30 minute drive from your office and there you go, you're in, you're in Whistler. <laughs> Sounds expensive. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty expensive. Like, without season pass, Whistler is like um, $120 each time. <laughs> but um, yeah, I got I got I got like 10 day passes, so the price was like $90 each. Fuck, that's still nine hundred dollars. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> but um yeah, it was totally worth it though. Fuck, it's so good. But um yeah, I had never seen snow before coming to Canada to be honest. We don't really get too much snow in Australia. So uh it was very cool for me. And totally worth the money. No, I can't see the Eiffel Tower. That's cool, I don't need to see it. I've seen the Eiffel Tower once. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, we don't really get too many mountains in Australia. <laughs> yeah, it's always work for us. I got a few guys from Ireland that I usually go with. It was kind of cool, like my first year in Vancouver, like um, a lot of people were starting at the same time, so we all kind of learned together, so that was cool. But since I used to skateboard, picking it up was pretty easy. Like I skateboarded for seven, yeah, about seven years. <laughs> oh, there's way worse than triangles on this thing. It's funny, it all started because, like, all the modeling blogs and all that sort of stuff started because, like, I did my, like, seven years of 3D spaceship thing, like the redesign, and people were asking to see the, con like, the wireframe, and the wireframe was kind of like this, and I didn't want to really show people. But then people wanted to see it anyway, so I showed it, and then... 
I said, yeah, don't follow this. Then everyone wants to know why they shouldn't follow my wireframe. And that's when I did like 10 different pieces of like, this is the concept geo, this is production geo, don't, don't do the concept geo. And that's the, that's how all the blogs and all that stuff started. But it's kind of, it's kind of nice not having to worry about topology sometimes. Just make random shapes. Yeah, I, I probably will continue it. The The reason I kind of stopped was because I'd already done like five streams of the same thing and I kind of looked at it and I was like, wait, I'm just doing the same panels like every single stream, so... I don't know if people get bored of that sort of stuff. Like, I don't know. Yeah, sometimes it's nice just to not worry about topology. Just make cool shit. I know, I do I do want to practice that concept more as well. <laughs> yeah, I um Yeah, I got Red Dead Redemption. Like it, it's really, really good. But there's, there's a point of time where I was, I was sitting there cutting wood, and I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, why am I, why am I cutting wood in a video game? Why am I walking around with this random sack in a video game? I should probably do something more constructive. But everything else in the game is great. Yeah, like Rockstar killed it in that game. I'll probably play it a bit tonight. That's all center. <laughs> Learning history. Yeah. Yeah, that game is so fun though. So much random shit happens. I'm just squashing it down a bit because it looks a bit, it was just a bit too circular. But yeah, like seriously, after seeing games like, uh, you know, God of War, you see stuff like, um, yeah, Red Dead Redemption, it makes you think, why don't I just go into games? Like, the the level of what those guys are doing, well, guys and girls, what they're doing these days is just insane. Like, usually people think, like, oh, a film you work on the most highest quality stuff, but that's totally not true. Like, some of the stuff that game studios pump out these days is just as good as what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe one day. I think one of the cool things is, like, I really like seeing, like, the art dumps they get to do. Like, we don't get anything like that. Like, yeah, VFX, we get no art dumps. You know, the, uh, whatever we do is owned by the client, and that's pretty much it. That's where it ends. Yeah, very very rarely they even do like breakdowns these days. Which is a shame. There's some there's so much really cool stuff we do that just no one will ever see because it's covered in motion blur and <laughs> Yeah, no legal unthumps. 
You can definitely do an art dump if you want to end your career instantly and get blacklisted and then sued by multi-billion dollar companies. You can totally feel free to art dump this if you want. Yeah? So. Yeah, I stopped playing games for quite a bit because I kind of felt like, oh, I, I could be doing 3D work instead. But then after five years of doing, like, no video games and just doing 3D work, it just... It hit the point where I'm like, screw it. I'm gonna buy every console and every game I feel like now. Well, that's a bit weird. What's this? What's a deceit badge? Okay. How do I do that? So I guess most people that have found me have been through uh... But what category am I in? Like most of the time don't people usually use Twitch for like gaming? Oh I thought I did that already though. Nah oh, whatever I'll, I'll look into it after the stream. Oh, uh, okay. Fortnite category, yeah, that's true. I never played Fortnite, but I don't know. I got Call of Duty Black Ops, and I, I kind of got bored of the Battle Royale, to be honest. I don't... If people enjoy that stuff, that's cool, but I don't know, I kind of got bored of it. I don't know, I can't imagine people that aren't into CG wanting to watch someone move Vertex around. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty accurate point. Hey, do you guys know about creasing? I constantly say not to use it in my blogs. But I use it a lot for concept. Because it allows you to like soften things without having to commit. Like you can see what things look like smooth without having to commit to actually smoothing it. So it can be very handy for this sort of stuff.
so yeah I kind of found that thing as well it's just for fun there's I would never ever do professional work on a stream ever I wouldn't even be able to there's no way I could get it out of an office the only thing I'm ever going to stream is my own personal stuff. Yeah, this is why creasing is good, because we can kind of like explore cool shapes without having to commit to them. This is something I like to do with hard server stuff, is you try and get lines to kind of match up with each other. It just helps give more believability to your your work. How do you don't leave with something? Um, it's you can't usually even physically do it like firstly a lot of computers like you can't even put a thumb drive in they just disable the thumb drive thing so that's no problem there and then like the computers themselves they're not really connected to the internet so you can't put anything on like Google Drive or anything like that like even if I wanted to take something out of the office I don't know how I'd actually do it Like, there's no one that watches you all day, I don't know. And even if you did do something shifty, I'm sure someone would notice. Yo, how's it going? What's the tool that makes the second line curve like the first? What do you mean? I just used multi-cut to redraw the line again. So I did one line and then I just did another one afterwards. It's just multi-cut for both.
Oops. Oh shit, shouldn't have done that. Whoops. Oh, you mean just press three? Oh, I'm just previewing smooth. Like that's that's what the geometry looks like. And by pressing three I'm just viewing it smooth. Nothing nothing too crazy. Yeah, so the geometry still exists in its bad state, but I'm just viewing it like that. Damn, why, why is everyone watching my stream up at 6 a.m.? <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for tuning in so late, I appreciate it. I kind of assumed like most of the people watching the stream were like uh, in Canada or States, but everyone seems to be up at like 6 a.m. All, all the, all the uh, computers themselves are linked to each other through the network, but um, they're just not. They just can't go out of that. Like we have to, we have to share work somehow. So, uh, yeah. Damn, how do you guys all get up at like 5 a.m.? It's insane. Yo, how is it living in Germany? <laughs> Office stream, no chance. No way in hell. I would have someone contacting me instantly. And my career would be done. Yeah, I listen to music at work. 
I, I personally can't just sit there in silence, especially because like when you're in like a production environment, there'll be people walking around doing like rounds and like supervisors will be around talking with people and like there's lots of conversations going on in the room itself. It's not that quiet to be honest. You know, people sneezing, people... There's always constant noise. Why is Andrew's phone getting so much traffic? What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> do I know anyone that works at NPC in London? Um, yes. Uh, my head of modeling is now a VFX soup in London. He's the only one I know that's still there. To be honest, most of the people I work with at NPC London are actually in ILM Vancouver now. A lot of them are also in um, ILM London. Now a lot of people left NPC when I left NPC. Not because of me, but we all just left at the same time. You're running NPC London? Sick. That's how I started my career. Yeah, I've only been in Germany like really briefly. I was at Frankfurt for a day and everyone was super nice to me. Everyone was super happy to speak English to me as well, which was definitely a big plus. Um, yeah, I I personally... <laughs> sick. I, yeah, I personally don't know anyone in NPC London right now as an artist. I mean, I know... I don't know if Lisa G is still there. Giles, I think, is still there. But yeah, most of the people are not there anymore. But like, that's that's pretty normal, to be honest. Like, it's very normal for people to constantly bounce around to different studios. Like, everyone will go to Deneg, and then like everyone goes to Frame Store. Then Lun like ILM hires everyone. And then and they run out of work, and then it, yeah, it's it's very normal to bounce around. It's hard to um it's hard to stay dedicated to one company because there's just gonna be a time where there's just no work and then unfortunately you just have to go. God look how look how lovely that topology is. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm gonna get some water. We'll be back in a sec. How do you find how do you find it being a runner at NPC?
Yeah, that's cool. I know it's, it's weird when I was there as a runner like a lot of the other runners didn't really seem to want to get into the industry which kind of blew my mind like they were kind of just doing it as a job like not without they didn't really want to get into VFX if that makes sense and none of them became artists it was just me It smells? What? I mean, London itself is not exactly a cleaner city. I mean, I've always been pretty tempted to go back to London, but to be honest, like, it's hard to go back to London after living in Vancouver. Yeah, it blows my mind. Such a such a wasted spot. Is it still like that now? Like dudes just chilling. How many people in the stream? Ten. All right, sick. Um, what are we doing? Yeah, I know of Rise. I, I don't know too much about them though. Sorry, two sex.
Let the roast session begin. Alright. <laughs> oh no, I've already seen your stuff, of course. How's uh, how's your stuff going so far? What color should this spaceship be? <laughs> Whoa, Jesus. Alright. Pink? Damn it. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Alright, we'll make it pink. What, more like a purple pink or more like a, a hot pink or... Is this pink enough? <laughs> yeah. No, adding color can be really helpful for seeing like shapes within shapes. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys are pink on my thing, so it kind of it kind of makes sense. Jesus. Now that's weird. Yeah.
That looks really weird. Screw that. Yeah, I'll probably only go for like another 20 minutes, so like 10.30 tonight. What do you mean the connect tool? Oh, are you talking about instead of using like insert edge loop? What's the connect tool? Oh, this thing? What is this? I've never seen this before. Let's see, connect tool. What do I do with this thing? Whoa, what is this? Okay. Can you uh can you explain to me how we use this connect tool? Oh shit, okay. So now what do we do? How do we have multiple? Uh, okay. Connect tool. Is this Oh, middle mouse, okay. Damn, that's pretty cool actually. How long has that been there for? Yo, that is sick. See, you guys are teaching me. Now, that's, like, that's kind of the thing, like... We kind of learn tools, and we get so used to using those tools, and then there's all these other random stuff we just don't know. Isn't really? I will go to work tomorrow and I'll ask people about this tool and no one will probably know about this tool. But because yeah I'm just so used to just going insert edge loop tool and then having the tool settings open so I can just do it here. Like I also didn't know about this tool. Have you guys seen? Um, if you go shift right click, have you guys seen the uh, edge flow, the edit edge flow tool? <laughs> yeah, seriously, why not? Everyone's just a player. Yeah, have you guys seen the edit edge flow tool? That's something someone showed me at Denmark, and that blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, I was one meant to be a lecturer, and they were showing me stuff. Oh, use it? Alright. So what edit edge flip uh what's it? Edit edge flow tool is it? Say for example you've got uh Alright, let's we'll use it in combination with your tool. So we got this thing like here. If we go Fuck, I forgot what it's called again. This one. Alright, cool. So if we add this here, right? If you now select this edge and you go edit edge flow it will try and match the curve of what you're doing. So it means you can add like, you can add an edge loop in, oh shit, don't do that. You can add an edge loop in here. 
grab that and then just go uh, edge flow and it will snap it to try and match the curve which is pretty damn cool set flow so that's the thing like no one showed me this sort of stuff so I don't know <laughs> I don't know how you can find this stuff but yeah that edge flow thing is really handy Yeah, I only use it a little bit every now and then. Not too much. Oh, look at that topology, how lovely is that? What else did they teach me at Denmark? <laughs> uh, smart ass. Go away. Um. Oh, look at that pink, jeez. Um, yeah, I do use Keyshot. I want to move more into using, like, maybe Octane or something, but I just haven't gone around to trying it out. I'm just seeing what it looks like. It's always cool to see, like, what your model looks like in a lit environment. Jesus. Pretty cool. I don't know, stuff like this, I'd really want to break this straight line. Yeah, you can totally take a screenshot of this and just start painting over this. I know what what do you guys want to do for the next stream? Like would you rather would you rather go back to 
proper modeling or like this is only like the basic blocking of this like I could totally spend a few streams making this into like a decent concept model mm, kinda wanna finish this thing I don't know I think like people these days in general like instant gratification and this is a lot faster than uh, watching me draw the same corner topology over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Like, you guys still want me to finish the other aircraft though, right? Because that's pretty time consuming. Oh shit. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we can always do that. Um, let's see. Oh, not that one. That's not work. Where did we even leave this thing? Yeah, this thing is pretty cool actually. I know, I think that's kind of the niche I've kind of put myself into though, like like personally I'd rather move more into like design stuff where I'm kind of known for doing like production ready meshes so um I don't know it's weird I kind of don't want to do as much of this sort of stuff but this is kind of what people want to see I guess I mean do you guys like me zoomed in like this drawing <laughs> drawing lines Like this sort of stuff? Oh shit. Yeah, like this sort of stuff is hard. It's um... Like... Modeling uncurved surfaces like this, it's... Which is a little bit of pinching. It's mainly about just having enough topology to deal with the model, if that makes sense. Like, this is probably not enough topology. Oh, actually, I haven't even finished it. This is... That's bad. Why did I even smooth this? Get rid of this. Yeah, I didn't even realize I didn't even finish this panel. But, um... Yeah, I did the basic blocking. Closer. I did the basic blocking, but I never really finished the panels. The only panels I've actually like finished is this sort of stuff. Oh shit, let's not do that. <laughs> nah. Nah, I still got four minutes. We can talk about this stuff for four minutes. Damn, I did put a lot of work into this already. I probably should finish it, eh? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Me, personally, I don't think I could watch someone model an entire vehicle from start to finish because it's just a lot of tedious topology. Like, it visually is not going to change that much from here aside from, like, panels being cut in. But I don't know. If people like this sort of stuff, we can totally do it. <laughs> More than four minutes. Hmm. Yeah, next stream I'll go back to doing this one.
the underside. To be honest, like the underside will be kind of just cheating. Actually, hmm. Yeah, I haven't even thought of how we're going to do the underside yet. Drink and model. Let's let's not drink and model. Oh, seriously, like most of modeling is cheating. Like, honestly, like the most efficient modeler you can be is by cheating the most. Tell you how to cheat? You just duplicate everything. Yeah, I, prob I probably should finish this thing. I'll, I'll go back to this next stream. Mm, I'd probably redo this differently. This problem of coming back to an asset, like, later. I see things I would have done differently. Meditating. <laughs> I don't know. It's not too bad for me because I'm the one actually doing the work, but I don't know. If you guys get bored. Let's uh let's let's close this. That's actually kinda cool. I'll finish that at some point. <laughs> what do I think of Spider Man? I really liked it, but I got over it pretty fast. Not not that it was bad or anything like that, I just kind of was like, okay, back to back to everything else in life. Like it's really fun, but uh yeah. I don't have the concept up so I can't really model any of it to be honest. Hmm. What should we do? Do I even have the concept still? Alright, I've got the concept. We can do a little bit of it. Oh yeah, it's in the file, but um... I meant like for me to visually see on the outside. Oops. Damn, this is one of the worst things about coming back to a model after you've stopped. You're just like, oh, why did I do this? Why did I do that? That looks wrong. Why did I do this? Alright, let's model something basic.
Yeah, it's kind of funny because now I'm seeing things that I did pretty wrong last time actually. Like, why is this so high? It should be like here. Do you mean in studios? Uh, all, all studios have their own tools. I mean, I don't really use anything special. Like when I'm working, it's always just basic Maya. But I mean, you know, studios do have their own stuff. It's mostly pipeline sort of stuff. It's not like, like there's no real need to have any special tools for like basic things like modeling. Yeah, I mean, personally, I think people sometimes get too attached to tools. Like, you can you can make the most complex asset with the most simple stuff. It's it's all basic polygon modeling. I mean, if you have tools which make like speed up your workflow, like you know, more power to you. But I don't think it's like mandatory. You know, use use whatever works for you. Hard mesh? What's that? What is hard mesh? Never even heard of it. Oh, okay, that's cool. I oh know I tried using a bit of like Moi 3D for a bit. That's really cool. If you want to do that sort of like Boolean sort of stuff. It's made by one guy as well, which is super cool. Let's see, okay.
Yo, I might end up getting off now. To be honest, I'm pretty tired, and I was planning to get off at 10:30 anyway. I don't, I don't know why I opened this file, but um, yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably do this next stream. We'll go back to finishing this thing. I should probably finish this. Whoops, that's kind of cool actually. But uh, yeah, that's it for me. I'll uh, I'll probably stream on Saturday, maybe. If not, this will be the new time, like Tuesday, Tuesday night. But uh, cool. Thanks for thanks for tuning in, guys. See you later.